Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This video in particular is going to focus on dust, infinity dust, the grinding of such, the statistics, the numbers, all the key information when it comes to you knowing what you can actually get at the end of the month and how much you're taking home each day with regards to grind and planning because that's the main thing a lot of people are saying to me rich i want to get the five star awakening gem other people are saying no five star awakening gem no don't go for it and other people are saying hey go for this stuff because it's better so as you should know by now infinity dust can be exchanged for lovely items in the infinity dust store found in the store section of the game and there's so many kind of fantastic things in here from five star shards to tier tier one alphas to tier four basics there's a whole host of lovely things that are going to help you improve and kind of strengthen your roster and kind of tap in some more resources that you need for those lovely rank ups. I myself are shooting for the 5 star awakening gem and a lot of people will go, hey, why? Why do you want to do that? It's such a rip off. My kind of answer to that is I am building my 5 star roster quite extensively. I would probably say that I need a skill. I would probably need a science at some stage. Don't need a cosmic, so mutant and a tech would be handy. And that's pretty much it. Those are the ones I want. So, yeah, I will go with that. If I get another cosmic, I will then just regret life completely. But I think, I don't really think I could go wrong. Like, I'm desperate for a skill one for blade, but that's my own thought processes. Your thought processes about what you actually want to get with regards to resource and improving your champions is your own and that is your decision alone. I currently hold 4.2 million infinity dust and to give you a bit of perspective what I've actually completed I've done all dungeons so far except for probably two I think and a half days worth and that's because at the start point I was like man I'm not grinding out dungeons it's such a waste of time but due to changes with them it has meant that they're a little bit more exciting based on grind time the grind time is still a little bit higher than I'd like but you know I need that infinity dust I need those dark artifacts so to put you in perspective I completed uncollected I've completed master heroic normal and beginner and got so much dust from that it was uh, the best way for me to do it and i do think this event has actually been better than the last one i actually spent more units last month with the ghast guillotine than i did this month with thanos um once you watch uh dorky diggity days video i mean can't go wrong with that it's a great video that gives you hints and tips how to take down thanos and once you've kind of read all the kind of things with like how the champion works you're able to take him down quite easily. But I digress. This video is all about how to get Infinity Dust more easily and also give you perspectives with regards to structuring your grind for the foreseeable days to the end of the month. So let's talk about the Infinity Dust grinding. Let's start off with dungeons and in particular in dungeons obviously there's a huge amount on offer on the daily. To give you a bigger perspective there's 3 million on offer with regards to Infinity Dust if you are at the highest bracket, highest difficulty for this so that can be really good as well the dark artifact take home is uh, substantial as well and you can choose to spend that how you wish with regards to those type of crystals but the main focus yes infinity dust and 71,200 on the daily to get this and how this really works is you kind of usually take the event quest kind of end point which for here is 19 days 8 hours at the point of recording this video you then times it by the 71 200 and currently and at this very moment again take the amount of days left to the event end times it by 71200 and you get 1,352,800 so that kind of again puts you in perspective on the daily your grind you have to say to yourself right how many points how, many, how much dust theoretically can I get by the end of the month? And that really is your answer. For me, it's like saying, okay, so I need to do dungeons every single day. That's just one aspect. If I miss a day of dungeons, it could be an unfortunate, but there are other things going on that could help me out with regards to getting more dust. It's not always about dungeons. There's vanquishing blows and as well the Mad Titan events which we'll have a look at now. The Mad Titan events are pretty darn cool. I like the idea that you don't have to grind out so many. Uh, yeah, okay, the seventh day is a lot more champions you've got to face off against, but you know, the midweek stuff for the guys that build up the six days where you generate and kind of get those buffs in that you can then use for the day seven. Yeah, pretty cool because 
like you get, I think it's 30,000 Infinity Dust a day with regards to grinding that, and I think there's a substantial amount more when it comes to the seventh day. In total, you can take home 2 million if you do the hardest difficulty. And obviously, the lower down, you have to kind of put it in perspective. If you're new to the game, or you know, you're not as high to kind of do master, or don't have the champions to do master, then you have to really benchmark against like saying, hey, I'm not going to be able to get there today, but one day I will be able to get there. And we'll talk about at the end of the video what I basically say to lower rated players with regards to what they should aim for uh, to, to kind of like do to get more infinity dust. Now higher rated players that have a substantial roster, maybe have a higher mastery build, will then kind of go, this is a doddle. And that's great, that's fantastic, but it gives you that perspective that 2 million is what you get at the end of the month from this event. Next up, you can get 2 million infinity dust from completing all difficulties of the event quest. So that's that's cool. Infinity Nightmare has been a good event as we've talked about and a substa substantial award rewards on. And like I said, I've completed all of this stuff. I would probably say in my top tips for anybody that wants to do uncollected and maybe is finding it difficult, do beginner, normal, heroic and master. And once you've understood how Thanos works, because it's only on master and uncollected that he has these kind of uh, splits in cut screens and goes into different types of uh, infinity gem modes. Once you've learned that, you can then go into uncollected. A lot of people do make that mistake where they go from, uh, they just go into uncollected and go, oh yeah, you know, I can do it. And then they get up to the last point and go, do you know what, I'm actually struggling. And I think that's the point. What you need to do is go back to a beginner, normal, heroic, and then master, and then you'll be able to gather so many lovely kind of things like uh, health potions, revives, units, and then go into it and go, hey, I've got so many more things. I think I'd, I ended up having about uh, like nine like level one revives and uh, just like a whole stash of kind of like health potions. So the kind of cost was just like, it's just razor thin, which is absolutely fantastic. And if you're a bit of, if you feel like you're not great at fighting Thanos, then you're going to need that. That's that's the thing. You will need that. Finally, Vanquishing Blows. A lot of people have criticized this and a lot of people have said that it's a lot better than before. Uh, and just to kind of like talk about that, the positives are that you don't need a specific storage of champion to then get a bonus from it. It's a very kind of flat system in that uh, any champion of a different class, and that's the negative, gets 4,000 points. The negative, as we said, is based on it being very class specific. So a couple of days ago, we had a, a cosmic build up to an SP2, and uh, and then obviously if you defeat the enemy on an SP2, then you get the 4,000 points. Now, in my mind, Hyperion would be an excellent fit based on power gaining, as uh, you could go against very easy targets in, say, Road to Labyrinth, build up to that SP2 and hit in, but it does mean that SP2 and SP3 like grind is uh, is a lot more extensive on time. Now, where things come in with heavy attack, heavy attack for me is one of the most easiest ones to do, and even better when it comes to saying, oh yeah, you no, know, um, any champion will do, but disappointing with regards to class. A lot of people may not have a substantial amount of sciences, but still, it is possible. What I really do with regards to anything vanquishing blows, I use it as a testing platform for anything on Road to Labyrinth. So on Road to Labyrinth, I'll go into say round one, I'll then pick a science team, uh, kind of form them up and then go in and then just do a heavy attack and then boom, there you go. That's, and then just go on using one per tile. Yeah, a lot of people will be screaming at me going, Rich, you could use Arena for that one. Yeah, you can, but I think it's more time consuming, especially because you only really need to like hit down a heavy attack when you're doing that grind. Uh, as opposed to then having to get a champion down to that little bit of health and then time in your heavy attack or parry and then heavy attack. So, and, and yeah, like sci like specific classes, that's the disappointing side of things. It's class specific and because it's class specific, you may run out in arena with regards to your particular, you know, say science champions. So I like this method a little bit more, but that's my own preference. You may have a different one. Oh, there's loads of different vanquishing blow type things. There's end on an incinerate, end on a poison attack. Uh, so there's gonna be loads of different champions to choose for that one that poison. There's a whole list of ones that you'll probably see. And sometimes they'll be good and sometimes they'll be time consuming. Heavy attack, every time, anytime it's on, is the most easiest one to do. But again, I digress. Let's talk a bit about the infinity dust for this. And to give you a bit of perspective, if we look at today being 19 days into the completion of all of these lovely events, 
I can get based on 55,000 times 19, 1 million and 45,000 infinity dust. So that again puts you in perspective. It's important at this point in time to do formulas. If you want something in the infinity dust store, then you need to do those formulas. And obviously we've talked about the numbers. Take those numbers on the daily with regards to the grind and in times about the relevant amount. Yes, if you hit 240,000, you'll be able to get lovely rank rewards, but I would really see them as cherries on the cake. The cake being the milestones, the cherries being the rank rewards. So if you get 240k and you just go, hey, that's absolutely fine and want to focus on different stuff, then that's all right. At this point, it's 1 million and 45,000 left to the end of the month. But like I said, do those calculations so you are prepared for what you can get in that infinity dust by the end of the month. Now to put people into perspective and kind of round off the point, there is potentially about 10 million and 45,000 infinity dust on offer to players. Now this would require you to have done all dungeons up to this point and continue to the end of the month. The same thing reply, applies for Mad Titan events as well as the Vanquishing Blows milestones. It doesn't include the rank rewards. I have not put that in a calculation for that number based on the fact that it's up to a player's perspective whether or not they want to push past the milestones. So 10 million and 45,000 infinity dust, which really gives me a better and more positive perspective on the extra potential. If I complete everything and maybe get some rank rewards, I could have an extra 3 million, 100,000 uh, and a little bit extra to spend on some other stuff. So yeah, okay, I'm pretty positive with those, those calculations. So obviously when it comes to advice, higher rated players, you're probably going to have no problem with regards to completing all those milestones and probably pushing into a rank rewards. I don't think I need to kind of solidify the point with higher rated players, except for you may want to look at uh, grind time with regards to vanquishing blows if you're focusing on uh, arena. And it may be a case arena is going to work well with regards to hitting those vanquishing points or vanquishing blows. The Road to Labyrinth based uh, advice is solid. I've done that before. I've told people about vanquishing blows with regards to Road to Labyrinth. And that's quite important because then you're able to understand uh, it's a constant with regards to health. It's a constant with regards to what you need to do uh, with regards to like power gaining. It's just they'll have a larger roster. There's lots of other kind of positive things for people that are higher rated. They'll be able to kind of get through this without a breeze. And what do I advise for lower rated players or kind of players new to the game? Complete beginner, do normal, do heroic if you can. And at the same time, try and do master. It's going to be difficult to kind of push to that. But uh, a, a completion would would gain something good. However, though, do watch out. If you're new to the game and you're trying to forget, trying to go against the uh, uh, Thanos boss, then, then do watch out because it's not so easy unless you've got a an Avenger of some kind in order to make sure you get that kind of safeguard aspect, as well as uh, you know just just makes it a little bit easier against the grind. I would say as well, look to dungeons and do some like dungeons with alliance mates. Maybe not go for the choose a friend or find a friend, find a partner thing because it's sometimes not very effective. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a dungeons guide with regards to helping out players that maybe uh, uh, don't really think too much with regards to champions that they use as well as other stuff. Um, and then Vanquishing Blows, yeah, I think this is quite good for lower rated players because it doesn't discriminate based on the star. It used to be a case if you had a 5 star, you'd get more bonus points. But uh, nowadays it's all about having um, you know one specific class, which is good. Heavy Attack is the most easiest one. You'll have so many different ones to finish off the grind on. And uh, I wrote a labyrinth, right, guys, wrote a labyrinth. is the best one that I use with regards to benchmarking how I can take down the enemy. Uh, it doesn't change. It's all the same. I know what I know the as well. The energy spend is low. Arena, yes, is good, but I don't think it's brilliant, especially because it's class specific. So therefore, if you run out of a certain class, then you're not able to kind of blast through a lot of these uh, point grinds. So uh, that's really what I say about that. So that's been a video all about the grind of Infinity Dust. Yeah, ten million and forty-five thousand points on offer. It's crazy, but it can really help people out. I've said why I'm getting the five star awakening gem. A lot of people may not agree with me, but that's my perspective and, and my kind of like fault if it then doesn't land on the correct one that I'd like. But kabam life, that's how it rolls. So you're just gonna be positive, keep calm and carry on. I've been Rich the Man. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, uh, share it with maybe with somebody that's kind of concerned about their infinity dust grind. As well as you can catch me on social media and the links are in the description. And I shall catch you as well on the flip side. Bye bye for now.